Hi everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. My name is Ashraf from Adjust, and I am a technical account manager and managing our uh, accounts here in Southeast Asia, Singapore, Indonesia, Vietnam, Malaysia, all the area here. I deal in daily basis with our clients in the area. And I'm going to give you a presentation today. The title is Year of Evolution Rather, uh, rather Than Revolution. So it's about our uh, our uh, trends uh, that we look out in our data and prepared in a report uh, that I'm going to talk about later on. So before I go ahead and uh, talk about our trends, I just want to give you an idea uh, about Adjust, what we do. So are you guys aware about Adjust? Do you know anything about Adjust, what we are doing? Some of you, maybe, maybe not. So uh, Adjust is an attribution provider, so we help our clients, the advertisers, the app owners, to understand their marketing channels, uh, where the installs are coming from. They run campaigns with a lot of partners. We help them understand the performance of each partner and the campaign they are running for them. So we track the ad engagement for them. We track the installs. We track the everything, both, uh, both install events, the session afterwards, the revenue. We give them all this insight to help them decide which uh, partner or which marketing, is, uh, marketing channel is performing better than the other. And that's actually the very basic uh, service we provide. But we do uh, more than that and we go deeper in the, in the service and provide other uh, additional values. So, uh, of course, our clients, uh, they can work with thousand of partners because we are integrated already with thousand of partners and they can be marketing partners or analytics partners and with just few clicks you can connect any of those partners with adjust you don't need to integrate fully a new SDK or a new uh, codes in your app to work with those partners just connect them to adjust and we can forward all your data to those uh, partners and I think this is one of the most important uh, service we we provide but also we do uh, provide uh, re-engagement tools and very, very uh, robust engagement tools like the uh, re-engagement tools, sorry, like the deep links uh, service, really reliable deep links uh, solution. And also uh, like we provide tools to our clients to do the data management. They can export data, uh, the raw data, the raw level data of their uh, users and they can use it in their re-engagement uh, the re-engagement activities for their existing uh, for their existing users. Also, we have another important uh, service. It's uh, active fraud rejection. I will talk about uh, fraud later on in my slides. But we also this service is actually one of the most important services we provide to our clients to help them find, detect, and reject uh, mobile advertising fraud on a real-time basis. And this helps our clients actually to uh, reject tons or tons of those fake. Uh, data and save a lot of uh, their budget. So simply we simplify the uh, marketing uh, ecosystem for our uh, clients. And that's like very brief introduction about Adjust. And now I'm going to talk about the trends of 2019. So to date we have over, like last time I checked, it was over 28,000 app uh, using Adjust. So I can say uh, like we have billions and billions of data sets we see in our, uh, in our daily work. Every day we see millions of data coming in and out. So our data science team uh, did the, uh, the deep dive in the data and arranged this report for you guys. And I'm going to talk about the report in uh, more details. But first I want to focus on the main three trends we found in, uh, in the data of 2019. We're already in Q4 and it's running too fast this year. So I can say this is the trend of 2019 already. So number one, automation, uh, marketing automation, and then data quality and uh, fraud prevention in general. So let's take the first one, marketing automation. And let me ask you guys, like how many of you are developers? Okay, good. And like, how many of you integrated at least one SDK recently in the last three months, maybe? None? Okay, so we know that in average, uh, any app at least use the average 14 SDK, and that's a lot actually. So in average you have 14 SDK, 
it takes a lot of time to in the development side and not only like implement it one time and forget it, you have to maintain it for a long time. So it's a lot of frustration for developers and also for marketers who are requesting uh, adding those uh, SDKs in, in the app. And then your data sci scientist team as well, will spend a lot of time uh, analyzing this data, collecting the data from each SDK, cleaning it up, and then summarize and make it a useful data set. So overall, it takes a lot of time and it is frustrating. So there is a need for marketing automation. Simplify this process, reduce the number of SDKs as much as you can, so you can like ev make everyone's life uh, much more easier. So for this reason, we see that automation is becoming a very important topic uh, this year. So with marketing automation, you can do less manual work and more time to focus on more important matters, like rather than just trying to find uh, good data in among a lot of uh, um, a big amount of data. And also you can take more accurate decision because you will get less sources of truth so you can get uh, more accurate data. And we know that already 49%, almost 50% of the advertisers, mobile apps advertisers are trying already to remove the marketing automation in-house with the help of partners like Adjust and other partners as well. And trend number two, so data quality. So now we see from our clients in the recent years, but also still going on in, in this year, 2019, the data quality. Of course, your data must be good data. And when we, see, when we say good data, we don't mean like less data or maybe more data. We don't mean that. We mean useful data and meaningful data. So uh, based on our marketing research, we know that 84% 84, uh, 84 of CEOs around the world, they are concerned, they are worried uh, about the sources of the data uh, they are building the decision on. So, of course, sometimes it can go up to 20 SDK, collecting data from your app and sending them back to your, uh, uh, to your servers, to your BI system, and your team, the CEOs, the C-level team, they look at this, the result of this data and take decisions based on them. So if this data is not reliable, so most likely the decisions might not be correct. And, yeah, board data here uh, can be anything like bad data, Missing data, which is a, one of the most common issues, you miss some data. The SDKs are collecting data, but they, for some reason they might miss some data. You can get inaccurate data, or you can get duplicated data, and at the end, it is not correct data, so it will be wrong data. And what we see here, the definition of good data would be completeness, so you, there is no gaps, you don't miss any data, and consistency, so the data is aligned with uh, what you are expecting to receive based on what you received already. So you're getting the, the data in the same pattern you're already getting. If you are getting totally different thing every time uh, you look at the data, so that might be uh, an indication that something wrong. And also the accuracy, of course, the data must be correct data, not like unrelevant data or maybe anything else. Also timeliness. So the data must be in real time. If anything going slow, so it will not be also a good data. And spoiler alert, guys, whatever you do, data is going to be affected by the big elephant in the room, which is fraud. And this takes me to the next slide. And uh, number three, the trend number three in 2019, uh, it's fraud. So fraud is here to stay. And uh, I'm sure you hear a lot about fraud and still going on in 2019. It's just not this year, it's from many years ago and still evolving as well with all the uh, trends in the market. So ad fraud is a hidden enemy for any user acquisition marketer. And the estimated damage caused by fraud in 2018 is $5 billion. And we are talking only about uh, mobile ad fraud. I'm not talking about fraud in general, only mobile ad fraud, which is a big number. And again, we are talking about data accuracy, but if your data is affected by fraud, it is not good data anymore. And of course, you don't need to use such uh, data contaminated with fraud in your marketing automation, because at the end, the result will not be the one that you are expecting. Also, why fraud is a big issue? Because it's a big market. So we estimate, or we know that in 2021, there will be 6.3 billion mobile users around the world. 
and we know that in 2019, the ad advertising spending is expected to uh, rise until, I think, $230 uh, billion, which is a big uh, amount. As I already said, we see or we estimate the fraud amount to be $5 billion. So it's for fraudsters, it's a million billion dollar business for them. So more users, more money, and more marketers' attention, and at the same time, it's more fraudster attention to this market. So I'm sure you might have heard before about any of those uh, fraud schemes like click spamming, bot installs, ad hijacking, many names for different type of frauds. And every day we see a new uh, fraud evolving and popping up. So what's fraud anyway? So anything, fraud is just anything can steal your money. Simply, regardless of the name of the fraud, the, the target is always the same. They want to get your budget, your marketing budget, a portion of your market budget. And they use the many tools to do that. And whenever you find one tool, one fraud tool, and block it, another one will pop up in the same time, uh, creating another way, a new way to hijack your uh, marketing budget. And if you don't find, if you didn't find this uh, fraud store tools timely, you will lose a lot of money. And in Adjust, we, regardless of the name of the fraud tool they are using, the fraudsters they are using, we see fraud or we identify fraud into two big buckets. So the first one, the fraud that target ad engagement. And when we say ad engagement, we mean clicks and impressions. And another type targeting the app activity. So when we say app activity, that means it might be install, session, event, any post and install event, that's the app activity. So for investors, they want to get money first by hijacking the ad engagement so they can guarantee that the user who installed the app or this action afterward will be attributed to them so they can claim the money after uh, the user install or trigger whatever event you are looking for. So we call it like mobile attribution fraud and mobile user fraud. So mobile attribution, do you want to see the attribution? And attribution here means the, the action or the, the process of matching install or event to the marketing channel. That's the attribution. And mobile user hijacking or mobile user fraud, that's the fraud that target the actions happen after the install. So we created this matrix, just simplify everything. We don't want to get lost in a lot of definitions. And we know that on average, the loss or the damage caused by a mobile ad fraud, at least like something between 15 to 20 percent of your marketing budget. And regardless of the marketing budget, we see in our data, in our internal data, that the average fraud, at, in average, in all our clients and all our, uh, the apps using Adjust, we see the average is 4 percent. So don't think that your ad is safe and you don't have fraud. Fraud is existing everywhere. And we also like think like even if you don't care that much about that 20% of your marketing budget, it is not affecting only the uh, marketing budget, it's affecting all your business. Remember what we talk about data accuracy? Because it's affecting your data, you cannot make right decision or your decision will not be accurate because the data you are seeing are not reflecting what is uh, actually happening in the market. And <clears throat> make it even worse, the average is 20%, but sometimes we see it like uh, skyrocketing up to 90%. So, which means that you are losing 90% of your marketing budget for false data. And also, based on uh, market research for, um, for the ad fraud in the US, we found that uh, almost 20% of the marketers, they have a zero tolerance policy against ad fraud. When once they see fraud from any channel, even if it is 1%, they block that channel. And 50% actually can tolerate up to 5% of the fraud. So they allow channels that maybe they see some fraud from them up to 5%. And surprisingly, 30% of the people uh, participating in this research, 30% they can accept more than 5% actually, which is not good. So uh, in Adjust, we introduced the fraud prevention suite. It's a, it's a tool we use to detect and reject fraud in real time, and we keep evolving. Whenever we see a new fraud in the market, we introduce another tool 
to this uh, package at uh, fraud prevention. And from our data, what we see in 2019, STK spoofing, this is one of the tools we use to detect and reject uh, fraud, is actually <coughs> contributing to 37% uh, of the fraud we see across all over the uh, 28,000 app using Adjust. And the second will be click injection, and then followed by fake installs, and then followed by click spamming. So SDK spoofing here means fake installs. You're actually getting fake data trying to spoof the SDK, trying to spoof adjust SDK. We created a tool for that called SDK Signature to filter out all the traffic coming to our server to find out if the install is real or not. But we already rejected 37% on average across all the billions of data we are looking at. So you can imagine now, this is the trend right now. It's SDK spoofing. And as you see in the numbers, uh, game, uh, game companies or game apps are actually a huge victim of this type of fraud. And not only this type, all over, uh, in all over the filters, we see that game apps actually uh, get a big portion of the fraud. And why is that? Because we think it is the manner or the, the way you spend on the marketing of the games. So game apps are different from other apps. They tend to spend more in user acquisition, and they also they tend to just spend widely and uh, broadly to acquire new user. So again, the damage doesn't stop at your marketing budget. Your organic user activities will be pushed, distort view of the campaign uh, performance, and also you will get unreliable performance uh, indicators. And also, at the end, it will be any accurate data. So the bottom line here, fraud is affecting the whole business. It is not only marketing budget. It's not only money. It's also the data is affected. So we had, we actually, when, when we see this thing happening, not only this year, but also from the last year and the year before it, we immediately told our clients to start using our fraud prevention tools. And among those uh, early, uh, early adopter of adjust uh, fraud prevention. We have our client Maituna and Viber as well. We take them as a case study and created case study for, with them. You can, we have it printed out here in our booth in, uh, in the event here and also we have it online. You can guys just uh, Google it, adjust in our uh, adjust website. You can download those uh, case studies. I'm sure you will find a lot of hints on how to detect and fight fraud. So, to sum this up, to date we have worked with countless companies uh, uh, around the globe to stop fraud. And we, I think, like as a technical account manager, and I work closely with our clients every day, I think we change it, the ecosystem in the market. And every single partner now work with Adjust, either our clients or even our partners, they trust in the numbers Adjust provide. When, and they come back to us to decide if the data they are receiving, is it fraud or not fraud, based on Adjust judgment. And I think that's pretty great. So um, again, here talking about the uh, app trend report of 2019, our data science scientist team uh, dove in, in our uh, database and look at the data in general and arrange uh, this report for you. So you can find a lot of KPIs, the install data across the globe in different sectors. So you will see the gaming, the finance, the shopping apps, the travel apps, you will see the install data, you'll see the app retention data, the paid users compared to organic users, the engagement trends based on the OS type and traffic source, and also fraud uh, trends are across the globe. So if you are curious how your game stack up against the rest, you can just download our uh, app trend for 2019. And you can expect some uh, data like Indonesia, Brazil, and South Korea are the fastest growing market in the, uh, when it comes to uh, app marketing. And also China is the fifth fastest growing uh, country. So just Google it, uh, adjust uh, 2019 uh, 20, uh, global app trends report. You will find it right away in Google and just download it. And I hope it will be uh, helpful for you guys. So um, that's... Uh, all from my side, but still the decision doesn't stop here. Uh, now we will have uh, our client, Maituna, uh, Adrian from Maituna, and my colleague Ajit. He's going to, uh, to have an interview with Adrian, and I hope Adrian shares some marketing secret with us. Okay. 
Thank you, guys. You hear me? Hi, good morning. Morning, morning, everyone. Hey, thanks, Ashraf, for the insightful presentation. So, uh, I'm Ajit. I'm the partnership manager for Southeast Asia, and uh, we will be discussing uh, with Adrian from Mytona some of the insights, some of the secrets, as Ashraf also mentioned, on how you can improve your uh, marketing analysis, your campaign analysis using data, and at the same time uh, get some insights on how Mytona does uh, within uh, their company. So, uh, just to proceed, uh, perhaps uh, Adrian. You can start introducing yourself and also if you can uh, share uh, what Mytona does, uh, it will be definitely helpful for our audience. Okay, um, thanks. Good morning, everyone. So, um, pretty happy to be here, uh, invited by Just. Uh, Mytona is a Russian game developer. Uh, we've been in Singapore for over three years, started off as a marketing and a business office, and now we have a small studio, about 20 guys, working on a new product here. So I'm doing uh, UA for my Tona. Uh, we've been in on Adjust for the last three years. Uh, our main titles are one, a restaurant time management game, and then the other is the hidden objects. Thanks, thanks, Adrian. So, uh, just to continue the conversation, perhaps uh, you can share uh, so, uh, some of the tips when it comes to user acquisition campaigns and uh, how do you set your goals or how do you set your KPIs to make sure that the business outcomes are successful as well? Okay, um, like with all new developers, uh, like three years ago, we didn't know what uh, RI to set, what the benchmark was, the KPI. Okay. In the best sense, uh, when you design a game, uh, I know the developers, the game designers, they always put some sort of hardware, software, and payment cycle, uh, but they don't really know what's the real ROI. So the only way to really do it is you need to run a test campaign okay, to get enough users, to gather enough data to see whether your ARPU, your LTV, and all your numbers match. So this is where you need to track, because yeah, only with uh, third-party tracking tool, you'll be able to get all the data you need and to see if you should proceed uh, with this game you have. Yeah. Hey, thanks, thanks, Adrian. So just to continue, uh, uh, why is it needed to have a third-party unbiased uh, tracking tool, something like Adjust Platform? Uh, for uh, gaming companies like yourselves to be successful when it comes to data analysis as well as saving marketing costs? Okay, um, interesting story. Although I'm in UA, uh, I'm not good with numbers. Okay, so if you see me uh, in office, you ask, uh, how much installs do you did last seven days? I have no idea. Okay, I have a rough number, but usually it's not a good answer for your bosses. But with Adjust, you could, uh, with a few clicks, get all the numbers you need, and then you can answer, and you could work, uh, continue your work from there. So that's how I use Adjust uh, personally, yeah. It's always on one of my screens uh, on my desktop. Uh, then the question is, uh, why do you need third-party tracking? Uh, I mean, these days, I, I don't think there's any partners that will let you run a marketing campaign with no third party tracking costs, they need the data to show to you that they can ask you for more money. Because if you have good ROI on a certain traffic, usually it will cost more. Because it's quite a fact that payers are less than 5% five, 5 of all your users. So if you have a source that you can identify as good money, they will want to know it, you will want to know it, and then everybody will try to bid for this traffic. And then the most basic thing four or five years ago for tracking it, uh, you need to verify if your vendors are giving you uh, correct traffic or like 
if they are charging you for a thousand installs, are you getting a thousand installs from a UA source? So that's yeah, just the basics. So just to add to that also, if, if you are planning to run your campaigns with any of the uh, big partners like Google, the first question they ask is, do you have a third party tracking tool? And uh, the, uh, one of the reasons is that uh, uh, we sit as a neutral unbiased third party, which will uh, basically help both the networks uh, or the networking partners as well as the clients uh, agree on the attribution model as well as the numbers of uh, the transaction between the client and the network partner. So uh, to continue, uh, since uh, basically ga gaming companies are very data intensive, the amount of data or the uh, data touch points they gather is quite huge. So how do you filter the data or how do you basically extract a useful insight out of this data? Okay, so uh, everybody knows that you need to get revenue divided by spend to get your ROI. So that's the key data you need to get to be in business. Then of course retention, it's important because you need to know how much of your users come back to play. But I think the most useful thing uh, that you could use with a third party tracking is when you buy from a network, uh, okay, when you buy from multiple sources, you know who is doing better in terms for your objectives. So if you go into a network, you could even see where the ad uh, is being placed, where the traffic is coming from. Like is it from a particular app? Is it from a dating app? Uh, you, you won't know it by the publisher name, but your partners will be able to identify. At least they'll be able to have a tool that you could choose to buy more from like publisher A, 1,000 installs, 10% ROI, versus publisher B, uh, 10,000 installs, 1% ROI. Then you try not to buy invest in B, you try to buy more of A. So that's the general rule of using uh, tracking to get your RI data so that you could uh, place your money, your investment in a smarter way. Thank you. So uh, as more and more companies, especially game development companies, even the indie developers who actually want to uh, engage external services like agencies uh, for their marketing activities, we notice a trend that even uh, uh, not only uh, smaller but the bigger gaming companies are also basically moving all of their uh, activities in-house. So uh, what would be your advice to some of the audience out here or somebody uh, who actually sh wants to start marketing on uh, their new game titles? What would be your advice when it comes to uh, having all the marketing done in-house? Okay, so the question is uh, whether to move your UA in-house versus agencies. So it really depends on uh, how you're working with your agency because uh, you might require, or actually you need to require a big uh, investment in manpower, at least training or getting the right people to be able to understand the data and make the correct decisions. So if you move that in-house, then you need to get manpower. And then they will need to consistently spend time doing reports. Uh, so UA, it's a trial and trial and error kind of a uh, job. So you need to buy, make, uh, check your data, make decisions, then go back and then tweak your spend. So where you put your money. So moving everything back in-house, it's uh, gonna be labor intensive at the start. And then it will help if you have good uh, technology tools to, to make sure that all your data is accurate uh, and easy to use and then you can best generate a report for your management to see. So the big thing is uh, make sure you have the ability to cover all the reporting side. Because if you do a marketing spend without uh, collecting data, analyzing it, you are basically wasting your investments. Yeah, like I said, uh, paid users are a small chunk of uh, all your audience. So you need to know where to find them and the data will help you. 
in, uh, just to uh, take the thread from Ashraf's presentation as well, when it comes to ad fraud, uh, as we see, 20 to 30 percent of traffic today is uh, fraudulent. So, uh, how how does uh, basically Mytona manages the fraud? Um, is apart from using a third party tool or third party fraud prevention tool, are there any in house methods which help you to basically detect fraud or identify fraud, or you know, how how can you bypass those kind of fraudulent activities? Basically? Um, to be honest, for advertisers, there's not much we can do uh, in control. So it's really to rely on to rely on third party tools to get this fraud out. The other way is to work with uh, partners, uh, supply side that has a SDK, so they they are integrated. They sell and buy their own traffic. And yeah, the the thing that is to monitor your UA activity, your growth in, in stores versus your organic. So if you see, usually if you see your organic behaving very differently when you increase your UA, then there could be a sign that, that there's some uh, fraud involved. Thanks. So uh, we'll open the floor for any uh, questions uh, for Adrian or Ashraf. So if anyone has any questions, uh, please let us know. Any questions? Okay, I think uh, that's all for today's session in that case. So, oh yeah. So we have a booth uh, at the showcase area. If you want to drop by, we have some case studies related to Mytona as well uh, when it comes to how to protect your uh, marketing cost when it comes to ad fraud. And at the same time, we would be happy to discuss uh, how we can help uh, any of your uh, uh, game developers uh, to basically track uh, your user activities as well. Thank you. Thank you.